Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video in the restoration series of the Grundig 2140. If you recall where I left off, I'd uh, run across a rather dramatic, rather pain in the butt snag. I had uh, damaged one of the uh, one of the coils. Yeah, it required quite a bit of patience. And uh, last week I just wasn't that patient. I mean, with Christmas and um, excesses of all sorts, it just wasn't the right time to do it. Now, you know, the festivities are nearly over. I've calmed down a bit, stopped eating so much, and I decided to get cracking on this. And I'm happy to say that it didn't go so bad, but I'm not going to tell you the whole thing. You can watch. I've tried to sort of show as much of the, as many of the steps as I could, just so that you can get an idea of how I go about it. I put in some graphics to, to um, exemplify what uh, the way that I record these uh, changes, just to make it easier later. Bear in mind, a lot of this uh, filming that I do is for my own reference. So sometimes I just don't show you. It's no, there's no point. But I do like to keep a record for my own reference so that when I have to put something back, I can do it without any hassles and I can always have something to refer to. Right. Enjoy the video. I've got to clear up quite a few of these components here first. So I'm going to take this black electrolytic first and it comes off that end pin of this IF transformer. Next, I remove this resistor, which is brown, black, brown, gold, from pin 4. And I'm going to lift it up. This one goes to one of those pins of the tube. Lift it out of the way as well. And here we've had the first casualty. These resistors don't like a lot of heat, so that leg's broken off. So I'll have to replace that resistor. No problem. Next, I remove this black wire from pin 8 and I'll just lift it up into the air over there. I've now removed this little polystyrene cap, the one leg from here, which is pin 7. The other one goes to pin 8. I need to remove that. I'm removing this other polystyrene cap, this one here, also connected to pin 8, and I'm lifting it up here. This thing goes to the tube. The polystyrene cap that was connected between pin 7 and 8 gets put aside. One leg of a resistor, which is, what is that, green, blue, yellow, silver, gets taken off pin seven and lift it up. That resistor, by the way, is 560K and it's connected between pin seven and ground. It's now lifted up here. One leg of that little ceramic capacitor is removed from pin eight and lifted out. I think that another one goes to pin six, but I'll see when I get there. One leg of this big capacitor, brown, green, orange, I believe, which goes to the switching section is removed from pin 6 and lifted up. And this little ceramic capacitor that was uh, connected to pin 8, it's also connected to pin 6. I removed it from pin 6 and now I can remove it completely, keep it aside. A greenish blue wire, sort of, uh, it's wrapped, is removed from pin 2 and lifted up. After lifting that greenish blue wire, it looks like all these are free. I've now got a few more wires on that side. A yellow wire is removed from pin 5 and lifted up next to this little capacitor. I've removed a bare wire which goes to a ground pin, removed it from pin 3 and lifted it up. I lifted a blue wire that comes around this side, pulled it out this way. That came from pin 1. 
I removed a bare wire that comes from the switching network there, straight down to pin 1, and just left it, lift it somewhat. And I think that's all. That's all. They're all out. Now I think I can get this thing out from the other side. There seems to be some sort of clip that's holding this down. I'm not really sure what it is. So I'm just going to try and pry it out slowly. There are these metal clips that you have to pull in. That should be fun. Let me try with this. They come through and then they sort of splay out. Maybe this will do it. Yeah, I think it's going to work. There we go. It's out. Well, here we are. Just making a mental note for myself. This one here is pin 8. It's the one that's got some uh, wire wrapped around it. And what I needed to do is I just needed to bend those little corners out there and go to the top, push those in gently as you pull this out. Okay? I've already done this and I've done this and believe it or not, I found the problem. Let me try and give you a closer look. I don't know whether you can actually see that, but that wire has come loose from there. From there. And the reason it came loose is because this whole thing got unstuck. See that? So I'm going to have to glue that with some super glue or something. And Hopefully I can then work the um, the adjustments without messing it. This soldering that there isn't a problem. I just need to tin this a little bit better and then solder it. It should be good. What I will do then is check the continuity. I'm not sure exactly what the um, wiring is, but I can figure it out from the components that I have connected to the various points. Now, if we look at that drawing that I've been doing as I've removed the stuff. I've looked at the underside of this thing like this and I've numbered it, numbered it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 just for, for ease um, so that I know what I'm taking out. Now if I look at the drawing there and I see what's connected where and I look at the schematic you can figure out where these coils are going. Now I do know that this thing over here is coil number 7. Coil number 7 is adjustable on the underside and the top has no core. So there are two coils around here and you can see that from the schematic but one is a fixed coil and the other one has got the uh, well they're both adjustable because when you adjust one you've got the core in the middle and this second coil is around it so it too effectively is adjustable but that's done from the underside and then we've got these guys here which are my numbers are right what is it one and five yeah, I think it's 1, 5, and 7. Anyway, those are the two. And obviously one of these has lost continuity. So let me stick that there. Let me glue that there. And we'll check for continuity, continuity and see what we've got. I've got to try and get a wire through here. Like that. Which will make soldering a lot easier. So I've bent a little thing on there. See if that works. It's easy to get through, but now I need to... Come on. I need to fix it on the underside. That seems to have done the job. Now I just need a little bit sticking out here. I don't need much. So I'm going to cut the rest off. Try not to cut this wire. And now we can turn it. Let's go. I think that's there. 
Okay, now according to the drawing, what I've sort of determined is that between two and five, I oh, should put this the other way around, shouldn't I? Between two and five, we should have continuity. There's two and there's five. There's our first coil, 10 ohms. Then between one and three, we should have continuity. So there's one, there's three. Then between five and seven, we should have continuity. And then between four and six, continuity. Yep, our coils are all there. Now all I need to do is drop a bit of super glue on here just to make sure that this guy stays in place. It's still sort of wobbly, it's not stuck. I need to stick it without letting glue go down the middle, but I'll do that off camera because it's a lot easier. I'll just drop a little bit of glue on there and let it sit for a while, quite a while. Well, it's all together now. I did some cleaning, obviously. And uh, the other thing I did do is I removed the cores. What I did is on all the cores, there's one here. And of course, there's one on the bottom there. And this one has none on the top and one at the bottom there. And what I did is to make sure that I could loosen them easily or adjust them easily, I removed them till they or unscrewed them until they actually came out of the um, out of the former. And the way I do this is I put this in here, I put a mark on that screwdriver, and I count the number of turns counterclockwise to get it out. When it comes out of the top, it usually pushes any uh, residual wax out of the top there. And then I just go back the same number of turns. So it won't be precise, but it'll be fairly close to where it was before. And then I can just make the final adjustment when it's actually on the radio. And I did the same to these guys here because uh, that's one of the reasons why this thing was pushed in. I actually had to put some pressure in to break the, the wax. So they're all nice and clean now. And this thing was glued in place. I've cleaned the uh, contacts of um, as much old solder as I could. I left that little wrap wire in there because that to me marks pin 8. I can always take it out when I get ready to put it in. And all I need to do to put it in is I need to bend these flaps. You see these metal flaps over here? You bend them in, they go through and they click out. That's how it holds it in the, in the, uh, in the chassis. So what I need to do now is I need to go back to my notes, put this back, go back to my notes, and you'll see I've got quite a lot of notes here. This is basically how I go about it. All those little drawings that I showed you were a result of these notes. Remove black filter cap, blah, 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 all the way down here. Then I drew it a little bit more neatly on here so I get an idea of exactly what I'm looking at. And that allowed me then to do those little graphics for you, which is basically just for presentation. This will really help me when I try to put the stuff back. The other thing I'm going to do is I've got things like this capacitor here. This is a little uh, ceramic. This is the one that goes here between uh, six and eight. So that will be over here. Now you'll notice all the legs are bent. What I'll do is I'll straighten them and I'll make sure that they go straight in without bending the wires there. I'll put them in more or less straight so that if for any reason I need to remove them, I don't have to unwind wires tied around these, uh, these pins. I can do without that. One more test just to make sure that uh, the continuity is the same as it was before. And I'll be ready to put it in. So uh, what we had was two and five. There's five. There's two. Yep. So that one is there. One and three. Yep, yeah. five and seven. Yep, and four and six. So all the other pins that are used without the uh, the actual 
coils on here are used as tie points. There is, well, there's actually just one, but pin eight is actually just a connector point, a, uh, a common solder tie point, which they've used for convenience. Okay, next time you see this, hopefully it'll be back and we can test it and do some uh, final alignment. And here we go, we've got it all in. I've put everything in where it's supposed to be. I put a little bit of uh, sleeving on that blue wire and on the black wire because the uh, the wire had creeped, uh, the coating had crept back. Everything's back where it was and it's actually neater than it was because now I've got better access to those two uh, coils. Now all we need to do is test it. Oh, by the way, you see that new resistor over there? That 100 ohm, that's the one that broke. That's no uh, no problem. I put it in, I put in a new 100 ohm resistor. It's a 0.6 watt. We don't need much power there. Everything else is as it was, and I've tried to keep the lead dress or the positioning of the components more or less the same, but I do expect a little bit of shift on the frequencies. This is the oscillator after all, and any shift in components changes the parasitics. So let's turn this around and test it. <laughs> this is the uh, moment of truth. See if I've messed anything else up. Okay, let's give it a shot. All right, the moment of truth. I've got the mini whip antenna in there. I've got the uh, uh, supply coming through the dim bulb. I'm not going to risk it. You can always short something out. And medium wave. Speaker is in. The volume up. Ha. Yes. Okay, but we did have reception on that end of the dial. We had a problem at this end. Brilliant. Long wave. Okay. This is definitely not a good time of the day for shortwave, but it's there. And it looks like our problem is solved. Well, that was nice. That was a pleasant surprise. Um, it is not unusual for you to make a mess up with this. What I did is I used that drawing, and as I attached stuff, I would fade out the parts that I'd attached, sort of uh, keeping track of what I'd done. I would check continuity and uh, resistance values between the various points. I also checked where the respective wires went to to make sure that continuity was uh, was fine. So it looks like that is done. So what I need to do next is I want to do the final alignment or redo the, the alignment of the, uh, the RF section because as I said, I did mess with that. So I'm sure something out here will be or something here will be out of alignment. We can do that, not a problem. I'm not going to bore you with that. I've done it before. And then I want to sort out the, um, just do the FM. But for now, I'm going to count my blessings, consider myself extremely lucky because getting that thing out wouldn't have been fun. It would have been easier now because all the wiring, first of all, has got fresh solder and uh, all the wires have gone in straight into those little holes, the solder holes. I haven't bent the wires around just to make it easier in case I needed to remove it. I've done it before. I've had to redo things before. So, you know, for, forewarned, forewarned is forearmed. And for now, I'm going to stop there. And I want to thank you once again for your company. And I hope you've enjoyed that. Hope you've enjoyed my, uh, my misery. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, actually. It was actually a lot better than I thought. But I'm glad that I've got this thing going. And um, yeah, if you've enjoyed that, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon or PayPal. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.